Florian. Awesome. Okay, so I'll do a little welcome again. Welcome everyone. Thank you for being at the, the HUD Pro uh, virtual public comment today. Um, now that we're recording, I wanna just get through a couple other um, housekeeping things. First of all, I'm John, welcome and hello. I'm John Stovall. I work at the Department of Community Affairs for the state of Georgia. I'm a senior housing policy specialist um, and I'm joined with my two of my colleagues here uh, today. Uh, Laura Ann and Austin, would you like to just introduce yourselves real quick? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Austin Chancy. I'm the Senior Housing Policy Analyst at the Department of Community Affairs. And uh, most relevant to this conversation, I uh, help run the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing. And I'm Laura Ann Holland. I have the pleasure of working with John and Austin and other DCA staff on the call. Thanks so much, uh, Kim Carter, Glenn Meisner, and Kathleen Vaughn from our Community Development Block Grant Program, which will be partnering with um, this grant opportunity for us. So just want to give them a special shout out too, since they're on the call as well. Cool. Um, so in the uh, interest of introductions, we would love to know who's on the call. So I don't think we'll have time for everyone to you know, verbally introduce themselves, but if you want to put in the chat just your name, um, what organization you're with, if you want to include your pronouns, anything like that, uh, it'd be great to know maybe what part of Georgia you are uh, joining us from, uh, or if you're somehow from outside of Georgia, we're interested in that too. So um, yeah, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Um, and then I also wanted to just do a quick clarifying of what today's call is about. So this is about a um, a federal uh, HUD uh, grant that that the DCA is applying for. And as part of that requirement, we want to make sure that we are getting public feedback on our application, how to strengthen it, what questions or clarifications we can offer to you all. Um, but what it is not about is um, and DCA is doing a lot of things right now. So one of those things is we've recently opened up the housing choice voucher wait list. And then you may have heard about this. Um, and so this is not going to be focused on, we're not going to even discuss the housing choice voucher wait list or section eight wait list. If you're looking for information on that, um, the wait list is still open as of today and will be through midnight tonight. So um, please visit the link that Laura Ann's going to put in the chat that will help you get uh, to the registration page for the housing choice voucher um, um, wait list. And there's also an email address and a phone and a phone number that you can call if you need as well. So just wanted to clarify, we're not gonna talk about the housing choice vouchers today, but if you joined thinking that's what this was about and you still wanna stay and listen to the HUD Pro um, information, you know, we welcome you. Um, okay, I think let me just double check that there's no more housekeeping things. Cool, I think that's, I think we're good. So um, I'm going to share my screen and do, um, and Austin and I are going to go through a presentation together. Um, and then sort of after we're done kind of doing the, the presenting part of this uh, session, we're going to open it up for questions, clarifications, um, any comments that you all have. No, not that. There we go. Not that either. Hold on. There we go. Can everyone see my screen? Great. And there we go. So, um, as I mentioned a couple of times, um, uh, HUD, the, the U.S. Department of Housing and, and Urban Development, uh, which funds a lot of affordable housing and homelessness uh, programs throughout the, the United States, um, has released a grant recently called the HUD Pro Grant, or Pathways to Removing Obstacles to Housing. Um, so it's open to a lot of different jurisdictions across the country, and the Department of Community Affairs, as an eligible entity, uh, is submitting our application to apply for funding as part of this grant. So what we want to do today is um, just give you information about the grant in general, like what it is, what's the purpose, what are the parameters for it. Um, and then we want to go into our specific proposal because there are other others that we're competing against, but we want to 
share what what our proposed project will be. Um, and that includes going into some details about the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing, so which Austin will talk about, and then how this how our proposal builds on that. So we'll talk a little bit about those things. And then um, the, the third main goal is for us to invite public input for us to incorporate into our uh, final application. Um, some of you all, many, maybe many of you all are probably um, understand a lot of the housing related acronyms that get thrown out there a lot but um, I definitely don't want to make that assumption about everyone here. So I want to just go through a few of the um, key acronyms that we'll be discussing today. We'll try not to just consistently use them. We'll try to say them out loud as much as we can, um, but uh, to shorten things to use acronyms. So, so HUD, for example, that's the Housing and Urban Development Department, U.S. Federal Government Department that is the main funder for this grant. PRO is the name of the grant. It stands for Pathways to Removing Obstacles to Affordable Housing. DCA, that's the department, the Georgia State Department that um, several of us on this call work for and that who is applying for the federal funds. That's the Department of Community Affairs. AMI is something that you'll hear frequently in terms of income levels for affordable housing. Um, so that refers to the area median income and a lot of affordable housing units, the rents are set so that they're affordable to people at a certain AMI. GIC uh, or GICH, but we call it GIC, is the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing. Um, it's a essentially an educational and capacity building program uh, throughout the state of Georgia for communities who want to um, create more affordable housing. Um, and that's going to be like part of the backbone of our application here. Uh, CDBG stands for the Community Development Block Grant. That's a federal funding source that funds um, all kinds of local infrastructure, utilities. Um, sometimes it can, in certain circumstances, fund um, like housing, rehabs, and things like that. Um, that is going to be the framework of how HUD is uh, administering um, this HUD program. LIHTC or LIHTC is the Low Income Housing Tax Credit. It's the, the U.S.'s largest affordable housing funding source. Um, it's the way that we build, um, so primary, the primary way that um, most states build uh, affordable rental uh, multifamily housing. CHIP is the Community Home Investment Program. That is a state of Georgia program, um, but it's funded through federal funds. Um, but what it does is we can um, rehab uh, single family homes and also um, create affordable rental homes. Or affordable home ownership homes. OK, so. Um, at any point, I just want to say at any point, you all are welcome to chime in um, and just ask a clarifying question for things like that, because we want this to be as accessible as possible. Um, and because I can't see your. I can't see your like names or faces at the moment. You're welcome to just unmute and just say, hey, John, can you actually, you know, clarify this real quick? Or if you have a question in the chat, that's sort of very relevant to something I just said um, and not like a larger question. Um, you can put it in the chat and then Laura Ann is going to be monitoring and can help um, just help make sure we clarify those things before we move on and forget about it. So, OK. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the HUD Pro grant generally, and then after that, I'm going to pass it to Austin, and we're going to talk about what is GIC, what is GIC Senior, and how does the HUD Pro funding for our application build on GIC Senior um, and create a really strong statewide application. So the HUD Pro grant, um, as I mentioned, it's through the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, they just released it this year, the beginning of August, essentially. This is the first time that they've done this. So this is not a regular, you know, annual grant that comes out from HUD. This is sort of a special thing, and I think they're treating it kind of like a pilot. Um, so in terms of what the basics are for the, for the grant, they have $85 million that they are going to be awarding total. Um, the, they're planning on awarding about 20 different awardees, um, and the, the minimum award is going to be a million dollars. The maximum is $10 million. So 
for DCA, the most that we could possibly request and receive would be $10 million. Um, as we'll talk about later, the amount we're, we're going to be applying for is about $8.24 million. Excuse me. Um, the grant is going to be administered through the Community Development Block Grant Framework. So if you just think about it as like, how is the money flowing from HUD to DCA, assuming we get the grant? Um, it's going to go through our Community Development Block Grant team and um, channel, essentially. And that means it has to follow um, the majority of those guidelines and regulations. Um, we'll talk a little bit about there's some waivers that HUD has put in place for this particular funding source um, so that it's actually a little bit more flexible than your traditional CDBG, um, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, the performance period for this grant, meaning like once you get the money, how long do you have to implement it and to spend it, um, is January 2024 roughly through September 2029. Uh, I think also roughly, but about five years, five to six years um, is how long we would have this, this money for. Um, there's no state match required, so it's just funding. Oh, I'm sorry. This is totally wrong. There is a, well, here, more specifically, there's no match required, but um, to, in order to be competitive, right. <laughs> in order to be competitive for the funding, they, they score applications higher that do have matching dollars. So technically that's right, I guess, but um, you know, it's unlikely that people who get, or, or entities that get funded are not gonna have a match. Um, in terms of eligible entities to apply, state governments, local governments, metropolitan planning organizations, multi-jurisdictional entities are all eligible. DCA is acting as a state government in our application. This is the general grant timeline. Um, as I mentioned, this um, this notice of funding opportunity from HUD was released in, I believe, early August. So we've been spending the last two months gathering information, talking to people, putting together this proposal, um, and uh, the public input period, which is this is a requirement for submitting an application, is that um, every entity has to have a two week public input period. So we really we opened that up on August October fourth, um, and it went until today, um, and then today is our obviously this um, public input hearing, also a requirement for the uh, the public input requirements for submitting an application, um, and then we have about after today we have about ten days nine ten days or so. Um, to submit our application to HUD, so the deadline is October thirtieth. Um, after we submit that, then HUD will do its scoring. They'll they'll review all the applications, and then they'll let the awardees know sometime. I don't think I saw in the um, I didn't see a date that they're holding themselves to for this, but we can probably assume somewhere around the end of this year. Um, but we'll we'll see sometime soon. TBD. Um, and then the performance period is once you receive an award, um, then that uh, you have through September 2029. So eligible activities, what can you do with this funding? The purpose is to identify and remove barriers to affordable housing production and preservation. We can, I'm going to have a slide later where we'll go through some examples of what that means. Um, but in general, you know, you think about like, okay, in Georgia and everywhere, essentially, but in Georgia, we have a significant need for affordable housing. And where there's local will and there's local um, potentially some resources, but there's still some barriers in the way locally to make it happen, to get projects over the finish line, to bring things to scale. What are those barriers? How are we identifying them? And then how are we going to tackle them? That's kind of the goal of this grant. Um, it must meet a national objective for CDBG. So as I mentioned, the funding will flow through the CDBG channel. Um, and so while there's some things that are waived for the normal regulations, it definitely has to meet one of the CDBG national objectives. There's three of them. Um, uh, one is to um, uh, serve low and moderate income households. One is for urgent needs. So that's often like disaster related, uh, either 
um, prevention or uh, recovery. And then the third is around removing blight. Um, so as long as anyone's proposal meets one of those three, you're good to go. Um, other uh, more specifically eligible activities. This is a language from HUD. Activities that further develop, further develop, evaluate and implement housing policy plans, improve housing strategies and facilitate affordable housing production and preservation. Um, and then, as I mentioned, there are a couple of waivers that are allowed under this, but one of this, one of the waivers um, is that unlike typical CDBG funds, uh, construction of new affordable housing is an allowable activity here. Um, so I'll go through like how we believe HUD is going to be prioritizing and scoring uh, applications. So this is based on a webinar that they presented. Um, first of all, there's two HUD priorities that are pretty explicitly named in the application language. Um, one is um, applications that show progress and a commitment to overcoming local barriers to facilitate the increase in affordable housing production and preservation and applications that show an acute demand for housing affordable to households with incomes below 100 percent of the area median income so if you submit an application and you don't have both of those or maybe you have one but not the other your application is likely going to be deprioritized or it's not going to be very competitive um, so we wanted to make sure that our application includes both of those kind of priority um, things there and just a quick note about the how HUD is determining the acute demand. They have actually listed, they created a whole map and a list of priority geographies that are calculated based on one of three pretty specific data points that they've put together that show the need for affordable housing um, in those areas. So that it's, it's mostly counties, but they also look at places, which can be towns and cities. Um, so they have a whole list and we looked at the whole map and the whole list and figured out which of um, like what are the priority geographies in Georgia and how will they fit in with our application. Um, and then so how they're scoring, how is going to be scoring the applications based on a 100 point system here? Uh, the need and soundness of approach are going to be the, the bulk of what they're looking at for scoring. So can you show that you have a significant need in your jurisdiction that you're applying for? That's 35 points. Um, a big part of that need, again, is showing that you're serving priority geographies. Um, soundness of approach is like how well thought through is your application? Are you, um, you know, another a specific section that they include within soundness of approach is around affirmatively furthering fair housing. So are you, you know, intentionally incorporating that work into your application? Um, so those kind of things, how, how strong and robust is your application? Um, capacity, like do you have the capacity to actually implement what you're saying you want to implement? That's 10 points. Leverage, that's again the, the matching funds. So you know, if you uh, don't have any kind of matching funds to uh, invest in this project, then you're going to get zero points out of 10. But if you have, and there's sort of a scale, but if you have 50% of your total request or more in matching funds, then you'll get the full 10 points. And then long-term effect is kind of like, it's exactly what it sounds like. How big of a long-term effect is your project going to have um, on the overall affordable housing landscape? So this is a map. It's a little bit hard to see. This is a map of the priority geographies in Georgia. It's kind of hard to see the outline of Georgia there, but the ones in blue uh, and green are priority geographies. So you can see there's quite a few in Georgia. And so um, we intend to serve a good number of those through our application. So that is an overall, that's like a summary of the HUD program itself. I'm about to pass it to Austin where the two of us will kind of talk about the HUD, our HUD Pro application, DCA's application, but Austin's going to go specifically into GIC or Georgia Initiative for Community Housing and GIC Senior because that's like pretty essential to our overall application. So I'll pass it to you, Austin. Thanks, John. Um, so what we're asking for in this grant specifically is we're requesting $8.2 million to provide technical assistance 
through $1 million grants to select the Georgia communities. And the way we're going to select those Georgia communities is through the GIC Senior Year Program. John, you want to go on the next slide? Um, so to understand GIC Senior Year, first you need to understand GIC. Um, GIC is the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing. Uh, it's a program that will be turning 20 next year, so we're, we're very excited about that. But it is a three year program where each year we select five communities to go through the GIC program and through that they learn how to attract affordable investment to their communities. They learn about all the different programs that DCA offers and they uh, are able to receive scoring advantages for three DCA programs, the low income housing tax credit, the CHIP program and the community development block grant program. And it's a very successful uh, program, very competitive. This year we had our largest pool of applicants we've ever had. Um, it's geographically representative and we're, we're very proud of the GIG program. And because of the success of the program, we are now excited to launch the GIG Senior Year program. While you're in GIG, you're referred to as a freshman, a sophomore, and a junior. And so now we've created the GIG Senior Year program, which I will uh, talk about on the next slide. So GIC Senior Year is going to be a competitive program for the GIC alumni program. So once you go through the GIC program, um, after you've been out of it, is the opportunity to apply for what is known as alumni certification status. And that allows you, if you achieve that status, you're allowed to maintain all of your program benefits uh, for another two years and you can continue to reapply. Um, through that, we currently have a pool of 50 alumni communities, um, and so they will be the ones that can apply for GIG senior year. Um, we will be selecting two communities to compete uh, to participate in a two year cohort, uh, and through through that two year program, they will receive technical assistance um, from DCA as well as DC, such as the University of Georgia Municipal Association, amongst others. Um, and they will uh, be able to pull in other resources, but then they're also going to have the option to select from a menu of DCA programs that we are leveraging for this program. And so that includes the LIHTC award, um, a CHIP award, and a CDBG funding. Uh, and to to for these projects, they still have to meet all of the criteria these programs face. This is not just going to be an automatic award. They still have to have a quality project lined up. John, if you want to go on the next slide. And so this is the goal of the program. It's to demonstrate the transformative value of GIC and DCA's programs. It's to grow a stronger housing ecosystem throughout the state of Georgia and to help communities address their housing issues. This is a sample timeline of what we think the program will look like in effect. Um, we plan to open applications um, in November and we plan to have the program started in next April. Um, the blue text you'll see up there, that is kind of our sample plan of what the technical assistance will look like. And the black text, those are important dates for DCA programs. And so we're trying to align our instruction with um, the primary opportunity for uh, these programs applications. Um, there will be lots of other technical assistance um, unrelated to those specific programs. We plan to teach people about fair housing and housing choice vouchers, uh, short term rentals, things like that. Um, and then they will conclude this first class will conclude um, in two years. Next slide. Thanks. So again, these are the specific benefits to awardees from the program. Um, they'll receive technical assistance from the program administrators on important housing issues, and they will have access to set aside DCA resources that will total more than $4 million of investment. And that includes uh, the CHIP program for either rehab or new construction, um, the community development block grant, 9% uh, LIHTC project and a 4% LIHTC project. Um, should we get the HUD Pro funding, um, that they will get a $1 million 
um, output from us that can be used for further technical assistance, gap financing, etc. And so as part of our development of our HUDPRO application, uh, we sent out a poll to uh, all of our alumni communities and we were excited by how much feedback we got. And I won't go through all the results with you, but just kind of looking at the um, top five issues, those were cost of land, um, community opposition to affordable housing, zoning ordinances, and insufficient infrastructure. Um, and these are all things we plan to, that these we, that would be addressed through either the curriculum of the program or the programs uh, that we'll be providing. And this is back to you, John. Okay, great. Thanks, Austin. Um, so, um, so you got a good sense of the GIC program of GIC senior year and then of how we are investing the HUD Pro funding into the GIC senior year program as an enhancement. I think we've already shown this slide, but we wanted to bring it back again just as kind of like a, a summary. So um, this green area here, this is the $1 million grants that would be awarded to two GIC senior year um, communities per cohort. And so the the million dollar grants are and this is like up to a million dollars, but you know who's not going to take the full amount. Um, they are intended to be flexible, and that's because HUD the HUD Pro grant really allows for a lot of flexibility, and we didn't want to arbitrarily sort of limit what a community says is their their biggest barrier to affordable housing and how they might want to address it. Um, GIC will definitely like, you know, provide technical assistance to sort of like help ensure that communities are thinking about it in a, in a constructive way. But um, in terms of what can be on the table for use with the flexible funds, uh, there's honestly a very long laundry list of, you know, potential eligible activities that HUD identified and that we included as part of our overall uh, application. Um, here's just a few examples. So, um, and there's actually not even, you know, there's more kind of buckets, if you will. There's planning and policy activities, development activities. There's also like preservation activities and others, but this is just a few examples. So what you could do with the million dollar grant as a GIC senior community is develop or update your housing plan, community development strategy, zoning and land use policies, such as overlays to encourage multifamily and mixed use development, or access to affordable housing. So I don't need to read that whole thing to you, but there's a lot even there um, that you can use it to develop proposals to streamline and modernize your local permit process. Um, you can look at other development activities such as acquisition or disposition of, of public land or of land in general or, or real property for the development of affordable housing. Uh, establish or assist a community development financial institution to carry out financial strategies, facilitate the conversion of commercial or other properties to new housing. There's a lot of examples out there. These are specifically intended like, you know, the whole list is intended to address, as Austin said, those needs that were identified in the poll that we sent out. So this is our proposed grant budget. As we mentioned earlier, we're requesting 8.24 million um, over the duration of the, the um, is it six years through 2029. Um, each cohort will have $2 million that we're requesting. So 1 million per community. Um, so the cohort would be 24 to 25. The next one would get an additional $2 million, $1 million per community for a total of folk, four cohorts of two uh, communities each, which adds up to $8 million. Um, and then our admin costs that we're including as uh, for like technical assistance and general administration program uh, is $240,000. So that adds up to $8,240,000 that we're requesting. So kind of in summary, this is just a few of the strengths that we think our application presents. And we are really excited to hear what your thoughts are on this and like where we may be missing something or, or what additional strengths you may see. But um, first of all, it builds on an existing infrastructure and capacity um, and the resources that 
we're already providing the, through the GIC program. Um, so we're not starting from scratch on something, which would is uh, it's kind of hard to do in a tight timeline, and um, we're just building on success essentially. Um, secondly, the, there's sort of a snowball effect to the GIC program because um, you know, I like to think about education as a public good, meaning it's not a zero sum game. If you're if you know more about affordable housing and how to build it, then that helps me because I can learn from you. If I know more then I can help other people and it just like snowballs on itself over time. Um, the fact that the GIC program is 20 years old already and now we're expanding it, I think is a really huge opportunity for that long term impact element um, of the application. Um, our application is strong because HUD in their in their notice of funding said that they will prioritize um, uh, applications with a wider geographic scope. And so ours is essentially looking at the entire state of Georgia. Not every community is going to be um, eligible, but every alumni community who's gone through the GIT community through the GIT program uh, will be eligible. And so that's quite a quite a few. Um, that, and they're all scattered throughout the state. So it's pretty, um, it's an exciting opportunity there geographically. Um, we think it's a strength that the funding is going to be flexible, but specifically targeted to the community needs locally. So we can provide technical assistance to a community who wants to address a specific need in their area, um, as well as, you know, funneling targeted resources to them. Um, the, from the priority community standpoint, which is part of the, it's, part of HUD's identification of what communities have a high need. Um, it turns out quite a, a good number of the GIC alumni uh, communities are overlap. They overlap with the uh, HUD priority communities. So at least 10 of them um, are going to be priority communities. Um, and the rest, you know, honestly have a high need as well. <laughs> they got accepted into the GIC program because they have identified a high need in their community. Um, and then uh, we're also leveraging state resources. So the, the 10 points in the application that looks at uh, leveraging funds, we are actually able to do that quite well with this because we're putting dedicated or um, we are allowing uh, get communities to access a menu of, um, of state resources through the LIHTC, CHIP, and CDBG funds. So we're actually able to use those as our as our state match, which gets us, we think, the full 10 points. Um, so now it's time to open it up for questions. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see your faces or at least your names. Um, and we've got like 24 minutes or so. Um, and um, John, just to jump in really quick on yeah. uh, the question piece, I know there's folks from lots of different uh, stakeholder groups here present, and we've presented a lot of information. And so uh, the questions that we're asking for specifically in this public hearing are going to be around our, our HUD application. So um, I know there's folks here who might be stakeholders for the GIC Senior Year Program, and to the extent that your feedback will help us um, enhance our, our um, HUD Pro funding piece of that and how the GIC Senior Year Program fits into that. We'd love to receive it, um, but the, the actionable items we'll take away are specifically today for the HUD Pro grant application. Yeah, thanks. Good, good clarification. Um, and so Laura Ann, Austin and I will kind of tag team uh, the questions here. We do have some like more guided questions we can throw your way to elicit your feedback but if but we want to start off with just what are your first of all do you have any clarifying questions and there's always space for clarifying questions throughout the other questions that you may ask or or comments um, and if you don't have any clarifying questions, um, what are your initial reactions and or thoughts, comments, suggestions? Feel free to just come off mute, put it in the chat. Any way you want to communicate is, is welcome.
John, do you okay. see that question? Yep, I see. Yep, just reading it. So Kelly asks, infrastructure is major local government cost to expand into areas for development. What is an allowable expense for utility infrastructure expansion? Um, I believe that that would be considered um, uh, eligible as as a, a HUD Pro expense, just sort of expanding utility infrastructure because that is a barrier for some communities to creating affordable housing. So as long as it relates to housing, I think that would be maybe the link to make, and that's a common CDBG uh, use anyway. Yeah. But if anybody yeah, and CDBG to... team, uh, I see we have Kim, Kathleen, and Glenn on the call. If there's anything to clarify there about what those allowable expenses typically are for housing, please jump in. Really what we see um, as it relates to housing is the expansion of water and sewer, as well as street drainage and, and sidewalk road improvements type type of situations um, that would help um, in, a, in a neighborhood, a neighborhood type of environment. Um, I have one example that we've used, and Glenn, you can chime in on this, um, in the city of Washington, where we put in the infrastructure um, and then SHIP came in and developed the housing on top of that infrastructure. Awesome, thanks. Cool. What other uh, what other just reactions or um, general feedback do y'all have? Yeah, it's a cool opportunity. I agree. See a couple of people typing in the chat, so I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> OK, Glenn says, uh, attendees of the DCF fall conference will hear directly from the city of Washington. Oh, that's cool. As how the project was developed and accomplished. Um, that's great. And Austin will also be giving a GIC senior workshop at the DCA fall conference. So if anybody's planning on being there, um, that's where you can learn a little bit more about those things. So Kelly, is there a percentage of the grant that has to serve less than 100% of AMI or does it require 100% of those served to be less than 100% AMI? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Laura Ann, do you remember? Yes, yeah, Kelly. So um, since this is an ex expansion of the Community Development Block Grant, all of the funding still has to meet one of their um, national objectives. And so uh, it, it would be serving people below 100% of AMI. Um, and I believe uh, most of the funding will be serving those below 80% um, AMI. So, um, in terms of the technical assistance and planning that this uh, grant would allow us to do in pairing all of our resources for communities, uh, we're, we're hoping that we would be able to be a part of those discussions about which projects this funding um, could apply to um, and which projects uh, it might not be relevant for. OK, maybe this is a good opportunity. We welcome any more general feedback as well, but I had a couple of more specific questions. So as we shared, um, there's kind of two elements to what this funding can um, can help with for GIC senior communities. One is that flexible pot of, of money to be used for whatever local barriers you want to address. The other is adding more technical assistance from DCA in terms of like how to kind of um, 
how to do that, how to use that funds, and also how to um, how to like pair different uh, DCA resources together to create a um, a really comprehensive project locally. So first, I want to ask about technical assistance in in general. We want to get your general thoughts on you know how can we best set up our our TA um, to serve get communities. Are there specific capacity building opportunities that you're thinking of? Are there specific sort of like um, types of education you want to receive? Are there, yeah, those those kind of questions. Would love to hear your feedback on the TA piece of it. Hello, this is uh, Dr. Bambi with Georgia Act. Can you hear me OK? Yes. OK, great. Um, I can't speak specifically to get communities uh, with Georgia Act, uh, but I'm sure some may fall into that category. But just kind of because we work all 159 counties and what I have seen from uh, municipal leaders is that a lot of them just don't know where to start. <laughs> Um, they just don't know, you know, they know that affordable housing is a need. Uh, a lot of people think it's just your urban communities, but it's your smaller urban and rural communities um, that need affordable housing as well, as well as the infrastructure that goes along with it. Um, I'm from Southwest Georgia, so we see a lot of floods uh, in that area. But um, I don't know, maybe a development 101 um, or something. Um, oftentimes when I'm on calls, it's usually the, you know, the, it's like the mayor. Um, sometimes it's that the community development person, uh, but not oftentimes, but some way to get that community development person or that person who's going to be working directly uh, on the project um some additional training um but i know from the when you look at from the higher ups uh the mayors and some city council people um you know just having them to get just a good basic overall understanding um of the program i think would be or what the eligible uses are because that's the most of what i see a lot of people just don't know what the eligible uses are. When we when we did out when we went out and did the uh, we was uh, when the ARPA money came down and we went into several communities. Uh, a lot of people just thought that it could go to infrastructure. <laughs> um, they didn't understand that there were other eligible uses. So I think that's just kind of a lessons learned that we saw with the ARPA money. Uh, and so as far as technical assistance, uh, making sure that those frontline staff persons um, are trained uh, and then maybe even the, you know, the, the mayors or city council, county commission, city commission, depending on what it's called, <laughs> what city you're in, um, that they have a basic understanding of its eligible uses so that, you know, the frontline person is saying, hey, well, we can use it for this. Um, but then some of the council people are saying, well, no, we have to use it for infrastructure. So that that was just kind of my very, very general broad observations. Yeah, thanks for that, Dr. Bambi. Yeah, great insights. Um, I don't know, Austin, if you want to speak to that a little bit with the GIC program and kind of how it does that and how we could maybe enhance the local government, local elected official education. Well, that's actually a huge part of GIC Senior, like as as by design. Um, we're only selecting communities that are going to have um, significant local government buy-in and participation because with the regular GIC program, um, we have the GIC teams come to us wherever our conferences are. We, we move them around the state to make it convenient for people, but um, the teams have to come to us. But for GIC Senior, we're going to them. And so because we're taking the effort to bring all of our people to you, um, we're going to have to, we're going to require that 
local governments participate um, and receive this education that we're providing. Yeah, and, and Bambi, I think that's great feedback for our team to take away that we should probably clarify a little bit more in our application about the technical assistance um, who will be receiving it and that it, it will include exactly what you said. Like these, this is what you can use this money for. This is what you can't use this money for, um, for all of the funding sources that are available. So thank you for that feedback. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments about the technical assistant piece? Assistance piece. This is a great time for any of our GIC community people to present. If they have any suggestions or needs, this is a great place for you to chime in. OK, maybe everyone's just waiting to uh, to share their comments on the flexible funding. So uh, we will. Yeah, like I said, this can be kind of fluid, but um, I want to also get y'all's uh, feedback on what we think. Um, so with the flexible funding piece, each get senior community can receive up to a million dollars to address their local barriers. Um, our sort of intention here is to keep that as broad as possible. Uh, and not sort of narrow it, but we want to get your thoughts like. Does that approach make sense to you? Do you see any pros or cons with doing it the way that we're doing it in the application? And um, are there specific um, other considerations that you think we should take into um, take into consideration regarding the flexible funding part? I can hear the birds chirping outside my window right now. It's so quiet. <laughs> OK, Jamie, uh, because circumstances for each community are different, I think it's best to keep it broad. Yeah. Thank you for that feedback. All right. Um, if there's any other comments on that, I see maybe one other person's typing in the chat. That's great. Um, as that as that feedback is coming in, okay, Dr. Bambi, you said agreed, broad. Okay, okay, good to know. Um, we're always open to other feedback too. But um, so our sort of final question for y'all, and we can take till the end of twelve uh, in case anything kind of comes to you later, but um the final question or sorry 11 30. the final question is just sort of you know we have you know nine days to finalize this application we're going to incorporate this feedback but we really want to um ask you are there ways that you see that we can strengthen the application um any weak points any areas where you really think uh this could be a missed opportunity if we don't do this or anything like that. So again, acknowledging we're on a fairly short timeline, so any kind of like serious pivot is a little hard to do at this point, but we could, uh, we, you know, we could have a conversation about it.
um, as folks are thinking about their responses or or typing them in. Um, we want to just let y'all know that we will keep you up to date on the application. Um, you know, once we hear back, you all will hear from DCA uh, if we receive the funds. So we just want to make sure that um, uh, you all know that. And um, in terms, if there's any process related questions, you know, we're welcome. We welcome those too. And for the um, perspective, get some of your communities online. The the award for this should happen before um, the communities are selected, so you would know whether or not you had this funding uh, in advance of the application. Big deal. There we go. OK, so uh, from Fernanda from Pembroke, are y'all mentioning the large economic opportunities coming to the state? For example, example, the Hyundai mega site and how Git communities who have previously been in the Git program need those additional resources for those sorts of unforeseen shifts in demand on already strained affordable housing stock. Um, I can take that, yeah. So that would come in um, in your application. For, so if Pembroke were to be selected for the program, we would definitely tailor our education to that because we're going to tailor our education to each community that we work with. And so we'll, your education would be focused a lot on um, how to deal with this mass influx of employment um, to your community. As far as the actual application process, that would be something that you put into your narrative portion of your application where you're explaining why your community would need this. Um, you would not get necessarily like preferential treatment um, in, in that regard, but that would be a compelling uh, narrative for us to score. Yeah, and um, also on that note, I, I, we have not included that um, in our need section um, of the application specifically for this HUD Pro funding. And I, I definitely think that um, we should. So thank you for the reminder and um, feedback, especially as we continue to see more and more invest investment throughout the state of Georgia from um, different industries. So thanks so much for highlighting. Yeah, I think all uh, three or four of the major economic um, development projects are happening in or very near to our gate communities. Yeah, that's great feedback for us to incorporate. I would I would um, encourage us to take a look at that priority map that HUD provided, because I'm pretty sure that a lot of our economic development projects are likely located in those areas. Mm. That's a great point, Kim. Thank you. OK, well, are there any sort of final reactions, comments, input, questions? Um, got two minutes left, and it's totally OK if we end a couple of minutes early, but want to make sure everyone has an opportunity. If you have feedback at this point, please um, come off mute and speak so we don't um, run out of time. All right, y'all. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for attending, for sitting through the presentation, and for providing your feedback. It's super valuable, super, super valuable. And uh, we'll spend the next couple days um, going through the notes from today and, and trying to incorporate all of your feedback into our final application. Again, it's due on October 30th, so next week we'll be submitting it. Um, and then we will uh, hopefully hear back from HUD with positive news at some point uh, in the next couple of months, and we'll keep everyone up to date. So thanks. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, and uh, take care.
Thank you. Thanks, y'all.